Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about the world's largest purple heart table and we're giving away $1,000. You're not gonna wanna miss this one. Check it out. If you've been following along with us for the past couple months, you know that we've been working really hard and cleaning out our big workshop here. And with a space this big, we need a huge work table. So we've teamed up with our friends over at TNT Industries and they've made us something really cool and really special. We're gonna head over to the facilities right now and we can't wait to show you what it is. We're down here at TNT Industries with Tony and Tyler. They are a local wood shop that's only about two miles from our facility. And over the past year we've made Pretty good friends with them, and we're excited to tour their facility today and learn about what they do here. My name's Tony. Um, this is my partner, Tyler, and we are TNT Industries. So six or seven years ago, we met in a store. It came up that he had access to property, and we had kind of the same plan. We wanted to get into farming because you know, Plant City, get into farming. So. That's what we did. We came out here and this whole place was filled with weeds and water and there was only a hill that we could stand on. We ended up starting to farm and we were terrible at it. We didn't make any money. We lost money for a couple years, but it was an experience. It really made us close. We worked through a lot of endeavors. We, uh, we made it happen. But then after that, we decided we didn't want to be into farming anymore. So we became handymen. We, during that time, we actually built up a bunch of tools, a chop saw. We had a circular saw that we screwed to the bottom of a piece of wood and we used that as our table saw. So we got into Handyman and that actually kicked off. We were really busy, made a lot of money, but it took so much time. We couldn't see our oh, families. Yeah. And we ended up going to like Miami and Las Vegas and all these oh, different wow. places to do these like really cool jobs, but it sucked, you know? Um, it wasn't for us at least. Ha handyman and home renovation work was not for us. When COVID hit, we had to stay home anyways. So we decided why not become full-time woodworkers? Because during our time as home renovators, we had some projects, like we had a butcher block, we had some barn doors, we had some other things. And we were like, it's not bad, it's good money. And then we also decided like, we don't want to travel anywhere. So, you know, we started out in that old 75 year old shop and started making butcher blocks and tables, um, barn doors at the time and it kind of just kicked off from there. And then with that, we had to buy a lot of lumber and we had excess. So we started selling lumber too. So we're actually carpenters and we're a lumber yard that sells lumber to other local woodworkers and carpenters. So tell me a little bit about the building we're standing in front of. So this is a 30 foot by 40 foot by 20 foot tall uh, wood shop now. Two years ago, this was actually swamp. It was really low, full of clay, and unbuildable. We brought in a bunch of aggregate, limestone and lime rock, built that up, and over the past two years, step by step, basically sank all of our money into getting this built. It started with a concrete slab, and then last year, we were able to get the framing and the roof done, and then this year, we were able to get it to this stage. So we have wood on the outside, we have a vapor barrier, and some solid plastic doors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excellent, looks like a good facility. It's amazing, but let me show you where it all started because you won't believe where we were building things before. Yeah, I want to see the old place. Yeah. I know you guys haven't seen your table yet, but this is where we actually built it, not in our new shop. It's a 75 year old shop that his grandfather used to do woodworking out of. We moved into it after our farming endeavor, gutted it out and did a lot of renovations. But let me show you, it's not pretty now because it's, it's the garage now, but this is her. Wow. This is where all the magic happened before the building. And as you can see, definitely not the same. <laughs> like this was over our table saw right here. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yep. So like, the Hard table to maneuver. Saw high, if we went to flip anything. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So you built the table in here. Yeah. In here. Yeah. Wow. The blue up rack was in this back right here. And then our table saw was right here. 
and our planer was right there. Yeah, it was, it was actually pretty difficult. <laughs> <laughs> the 12 foot length is actually what made it the hardest part because you can't move it anywhere. We actually had to finish it in the new shop before it was done oh, really? because we just didn't have the space. And how long were you working out of here for? We were in this shop for two years. Oh my god. So for the past two years, we've been holding our breath, making things and hoping they don't warp. Because there's no AC in here, it's not climate controlled. Nope, and that fan doesn't work. It was wow. a very stuffy, hot experience mm -hmm. in here. But you made it work. We made it work. We made it work. That's one thing for sure. Really no obstacle has stopped Tyler and I. Like, when we wanted to do something and we put our minds to it, even if it kind of sucked, we made it happen. And that's one of the reasons that him and I are actually so close, because we've always been able to rely on each other without saying anything. Like we just mm -hmm. have always been there for each other and always been working through everything. It's really rewarding actually moving from here to there. Yeah, you know? sounds like a great partnership. Yeah. So you've seen our old shop. Now wait till you see our new shop. I'm excited to see where you guys have grown to. I mean, the way you're talking it up, it sounds like you know, there, a lot took you guys to get to this spot and a lot of hard work, a lot of perseverance for sure. Definitely. <laughs> it was all worth it. It was all fun though. Like even when there was hard times, I enjoyed it doing everything next to my best friend. Wow, this is definitely a much bigger shop than what you guys were working with before. Yeah, it's a 30 foot by 40 foot building, uh, 20 foot tall on the high side. Uh, we overcompensated a little bit because of our short building. Uh, <laughs> we didn't need to go quite as big, but we did. So let's go inside. Yeah. Check out your table. This is the world's biggest Purple Heart table. Oh my God, that is amazing. I've never seen anything like this before. It's the only one in the world, actually. I researched for hours, multiple days, trying to find something bigger than this, or even close to the same size, and I wasn't able to. So this should be the world record as of now. For so the, how big is this table? It's 12 foot long, it is 52 inches wide, um, and I think 31 inches tall. It has over a thousand pounds of exotic hardwood in it. Purple heart mostly, and then it has a zebra wood accent for the bottom shelves. Oh my goodness. And let me show you this cool part here. Put some and lights underneath. Lights underneath. Oh my gosh, wheels. Wheels, yeah, look at this glide. This is really easy. Super easy to maneuver. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. And whenever you want to keep it stable, all you have to do, there's um, trailer balls down here that you just loosen up mm -hmm. or un unscrew and it'll stay stationary. We actually outfitted it with outlets trying to make it really functional for you guys as a build table. And um, this is so beautiful. We're going to want to use it as our dining room table. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you guys gosh. can use whatever. Wow. We, we tried to book match all the Purple Heart. So every piece of butcher block, it's hard to tell on Purple Heart, but they actually go together. So this is incredibly impressive. How did you make this? Well, let me show you. So it starts out with rough lumber like this zebra wood. We take this rough lumber and we plane both sides in our planer. Then we take it over here to our joiner and we joint a straight edge. Mm -hmm. 
take it back over to the table saw where Tyler is, and we'll take strips like what's in his hand, and we'll, and we'll cut them into strips like okay. that. From there, we take it over to the glue rack, and we glue it up, and we glue all of, when we make a big tabletop like that, we actually glue it into 12 inch sections or 14 inch sections like this. And yeah, you can see how rough it is, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It goes from this to that. So after it's glued up like this, we actually restart the whole process. Just like it's that rough piece of lumber we started mm -hmm. with over there. Okay. We plane it, we join it, and we table saw it so it's new straight big pieces. Then it comes over to the glue rack again. And after that, we take something like this. We domino, so we, uh, we put these dominoes in to make sure that they line up really flat. And then we glue these pieces together after they've been planed to make as big as we need up to 52 inches. Oh, wow. Um, so you can make up to 52 inches. In this, this clamp rack. Okay. Once that's clamped down and that's all done, how do you get it to the finishing process? So there's three steps to the finishing process. There's the rough sanding, mm -hmm. um, which we take our Rotex and we take out all of the pits, any uneven surfaces, um, fill any cracks with epoxy. And the second step is taking like um, a regular sander and taking it all the way up to 220 grit. After that, we applied three coats of Odie's oil and a coat of Odie's wax in order to give it that sheen that you see on it now. Oh, okay. And then what about for the legs? So the legs is a similar process for the, the big part where we glued up those three pieces and then we milled them out to the shape that they, that they finished at. And then we actually used dominoes again to put it all together and then after that, we basically, it was upside down. We mounted the base to the, to the tabletop and we used angle to make sure that the tabletop stays flat and your base never comes off. Okay. Um, it is removable though. So if you ever need to, you can take it off. So what are all these bumps on here? I'm guessing that's the glue. Yeah, this is actually Type Bond 3. This is the glue we use for all of our tables because it's the only one that's waterproof. Oh, wow. Yeah, the Type Bond 1 and 2 are not waterproof, so we don't, we generally do butcher blocks and countertops, so we need that waterproof. And then how do you, how do you get all these bumps off? So that's, this process is when we throw it back through the planer again. The planer just okay. makes it all clean, and it actually ends up just like this piece, that, as you can see, there's a seam here of glue, but all of the other glue seams have been ripped off. Wow, so this is just, it's... That piece, but just put through the planer? Yeah, put through the planer again. Have you sanded this yet? Nope. Wow. Yep. So that all that glue comes off? Comes you right off. That, wow. So that glue is super strong. You haven't had any issues? No issues. People will talk about like separation and stuff, but it's really never happened to us. Stronger than the wood grain. Yeah, it, the glue is actually stronger than the wood. So if, if it does break, the wood breaks, not the glue. Oh, wow. That was really cool learning about how you made this table, but I also want to know what else you guys do here at your shop. Cool, so let me, let me show you around. We specialize in making tabletops and countertops, and we also sell hardwoods to local woodworkers. We, get, we can get any variety of wood, exotic or domestic, and usually most of our stock goes into making our products, but we always have an excess. Whenever we order lumber, they send us way more than we need, so we end up selling to local woodworkers who need lumber. All right, and over here, these are actually all the different varieties that we offer. Uh, we have samples here, so that way all of our customers can see what the finished product is. We're working on labeling all of them, so that way each customer can look at it, they can feel it, and they can see the difference between like red oak and white oak. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, so you can get all of these? All of them. Yeah. Wow, what's this one right here? I've this never one seen is, anything like this that. This one is Osage Orange. That's crazy. And that's the color of the wood? Yep. Oh yep. my gosh. Just like Purple Heart where it, uh, you know, it's purple. Mm -hmm. Osage orange is- It's actually orange. It's actually orange. And like right here, this is actually a new shipment of Cypress. And we're gonna be making a 70 foot bar top and covering it with epoxy for a local restaurant. 70 foot? 70 foot. That's huge. Yeah. We make it in 12 foot sections and then we install it in the restaurant in pieces and join them together. Oh wow. So. You you do all the finishing in, at the restaurant, putting it together. The install we do, and then the final epoxy pour over, we do in the restaurant. Oh, wow. 
Yep, so they'll get glued together. Mm -hmm. All of the holes and cracks will get filled with black epoxy. And then after it's been in the restaurant for a week in a climate controlled environment, uh, we're gonna pour epoxy over the whole thing to make it look beautiful. Wow, that's super cool. So what's the biggest project you've done here? <sighs> okay, by weight, it's your table. <laughs> um, but yeah, the 120 foot bar top is the longest one we've ever done. Wow, that's and, huge. And that was out of Sinker Cypress. Yeah, it was, it was pretty big. It was our first huge job like that. We also made an eight, two eight foot by eight foot live edge ambrosia tables for another restaurant. That was actually pretty big too. And then you did all that work in the old shop. Yeah. And outside of the shop. Oh outside, my gosh. We, we popped up a tent. I swear to God, we popped up a tent, put extra tarps over it, put a portable AC in there, a dehumidifier, and because the, the table was eight foot by eight foot, didn't fit in our glue up rack. Couldn't fit in the door. Couldn't fit in the door. <laughs> so we had to build it out there. Most of the work we did before in here was grueling. Grueling. It was really hard to keep it quality in our old shop, but okay. we managed. Mm -hmm. One way or another, we managed. So customers can come here to this new shop and then check out all the wood that you offer and then can order product through you? Yeah, so they can either buy some of the hardwood that we have on our shelves, they can, or they can come over here if we don't have it in stock, order anything that we offer. Um, and then other clients that aren't buying hardwoods, they come in for like countertops and tabletops. Mm -hmm. They, this goes through the same process. And we're actually working on getting a whole, this whole wall is gonna be samples of our finished countertops and tabletops. Okay. And the different varieties of finishes we offer. So we're gonna be offering like an oil finish, an LED oil finish, and then an epoxy pour over finish for our wow. countertops and tables. So if someone wanted to order a table like the one that you made us, they would come here, they could pick out their wood and talk to you about what type of table they wanted. Right. Dimensions. They, they would come here, look at the variety of wood, they'd pick one, they'd tell us the dimensions they want, and then what kind of style. Mm -hmm. And usually they, they bring us a picture of like the style they want, and then we make something with our own little twist on it. Tyler and I are very modern industrial type people. So strong, sturdy, and, and sleek. You know, that's what we're going for. Love that. So if someone wants to place an order through you guys for a countertop or a table, what's the best way to, for them to do that? The best way for them to do that is to reach out through any of our social media, whether that's YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, or Instagram. Or they can email us at ancientfarmer1148 at gmail.com. We also show all of our products on our website, madeatthefarm.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for showing me your facilities here, and thank you so much for this incredible table. Now we just need to figure out how to get this thousand pound table safely back to the shop. That should be interesting. It's going to be interesting for sure. So we have casters on this table, so it'll be really easy to roll it from here to the door. But from the door to your shop, I don't know. We did bring our tractor, nice. so we're just going to have to really safely and gently pick this up, put it on our trailer, and which hopefully it fits on the trailer and then <laughs> drive it down to our shop. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Oh yeah. That's nice. Every time we roll it, we're just like These wheels are really nice on this. Wide load. But to be honest, it wasn't even hurting us. It wasn't even in the way. This is the first time we've ever been able to say something like that. This is crazy. Yeah, we can. Can I drive for the yard? Yeah. All day. Do we got, oh man, our doors. It's not gonna fit. <laughs> wow, well, the sun on this thing is incredible. It makes it look really great. Wow. Really pretty. <laughs> well, you know, we could put boards here and roll it on the boards. Yeah, let's just twist it, we'll put boards down, we'll push it up. Right. It's so big, it's not going to fit to the doorway. Probably made our This table is so big, it's not even going to fit through this doorway. So we have to figure out how to get it onto the gravel. Okay, here, let's, let's lift her on the caster. Well, I mean, like, help it lift. Oof. 
All right, I'm gonna roll off them here. If you're able to push them in a little bit. We need a little bit of a lift on this side here. Okay, you there. want it? Yeah. And we're on an angle, so that's cool. So the tractor can come. Yeah. Right there. Whew. That's so cool, all the different shades of purple. People don't believe this is gonna be a work table. Yeah, it's, yeah. I know, I, I want it in the house. <laughs> so what I'm thinking is I'll bring the tractor around. We'll get up here. I've got some blankets that we can put on the fork so we don't damage it. Okay. Let's try it. You think if I lift it up in the center, it should be good? Good to go. So we'll lift it up in the center and then carefully drive it over and Stop. set it down on the... We got the table on the trailer. You can tell how heavy the table is because it's really squatting the trailer down pretty good, but we got it on here and it's fitting pretty well. Yeah, the weight of it actually is what made it the most difficult to work on. Tyler and I actually dropped it on ourselves one time trying to flip it. <laughs> but I'm glad we got it on here, that's for sure. It went a lot smoother than I anticipated. Yeah, that, that wasn't too bad at all. Now we just need to get it to our place, off the trailer, and in, in its new home. Yeah. Can't wait to see it in your guys' shop. Your shop's going to be so awesome with it, you know? I'm yeah. really happy that we could make you guys a centerpiece table. Well, thank you guys yeah. for this. I mean, this is going to be definitely the center centerpiece of our <laughs> shop for sure. We made it back to the Triple L Rust Designs shop. Now we just need to get the table off the trailer. To do that, I'm gonna clear out some of the space here, lift this bay door up, and get one side of the table onto the concrete so then we can push it into the shop and put it where it needs to be. I'm super excited to see what it's gonna look like in here. Excellent. Oh, very nice. 
So nice. As you can see, we have the table all set up here in our shop. I'm not sure exactly where it's gonna stay, but that's what makes these rolling casters on the bottom so awesome to use. It makes it so easy to move around and maneuver throughout the shop. I really love that they put the lights on it. As you can see down here, the lights edge the inside of it, so it brings so much light, and there's electrical cord on the other side, so we can plug in any USBs or make it super easy to plug in any tools that we use. We cannot thank Tony and Tyler enough with TNT Industries for building us this beautiful table. They're both incredibly talented, and I'm so excited to see what else they build. If you didn't know, TNT Industries has a pretty awesome YouTube channel and they actually documented this entire table build on their YouTube, so we highly recommend you going over there and checking it out. And that brings me to our giveaway. We will be giving away $1,000 in the form of 10 $100 Visa gift cards. And to enter, these are the details. Number one, you must be subscribed to the Triple L Rustic Designs and TNT Industries YouTube channels. Number two, you must be following Triple L Rustic Designs and TNT Industries on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Lastly, number three, comment below this video and TNT's video with the phrase purple heart. You'll find TNT's video right here or the link in the description below. The winners will be chosen on June 18th and announced on all of our social media platforms. Please see the official giveaway entry details in the description below this video. That's gonna wrap up this video today. I'm super glad that we got this table safe and sound at our shop and I really wanna know what you guys' thoughts are on the world's largest purple heart table. So make sure you drop your ideas and your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for future videos. We'll see you next time.